If you're planning on picking up a Z-Wave dongle to make use of it with Home Assistant or another smart home platform, then it's worth noting that the majority of these dongles all still ship with the default manufacturer firmware, and the default manufacturer firmware actually contains a bug, and this bug can cause our whole mesh network to just get flooded, and the coordinator to just act incorrectly, and we definitely don't want that. For this video, I'm going to be updating AOTech Z67, and I'm also going to be making use of Home Assistant, Z-Wave JS, and also a Windows machine. You can use other platforms, other machines, and other dongles, such as Zeus's 700 series dongle, and the whole process will work the exact same. You'll just need to use different firmwares for the different devices. I'll leave a link to the full written guide in the description below, so if you want a bit more information and want to check through that, then you'll find that below. The first thing we're going to do is just check what firmware version we're running on our dongle. We don't want to spend time trying to update it just to find that we're already running the latest version. So if we open up Z-Wave JS in Home Assistant, if you happen to be running a version of the firmware that contains the bug, then Home Assistant will actually prompt you with a little warning like this. And if you can't see this warning, then congratulations, you're running a firmware version that doesn't contain the bug. So it's entirely up to you now if you want to actually update or if you want to just keep the firmware on the version you're using and just carry on. In order to update our dongle, we're going to need to run through a few steps in order to get the latest firmware version on our dongle. Thankfully, these steps are all documented by AOTech. So following AOTech's instructions, let's run through this now. The first thing we'll need to do is to set up a Silicon Labs account. So using the links in the description below, just follow along. Setting up the account just consists of you creating an account, registering your email, and then just confirming a link to actually approve your account. Now that we've got our Silicon Labs account created, we can move on to the next step, which is to download Simplicity Studio 5. As I'm making use of Windows, I'm going to use the Windows installer, but if you are making use of another platform, there are also installers available for those too. Once the download completes, we're going to need to run the installer and then run through the installation wizard, which will just consist of pressing next, next, install, and then wait in a couple of minutes. When that completes, you'll be prompted with a review license, which you'll need to accept in order to get to the next step. In this next step, we'll need to log in with the Silicon Labs account that we created a couple of minutes ago. And once you press log in, it will start running through a few updates. Once those updates finish installing, we'll see the installation manager window appear. And from here, we're going to choose the option on the right, which is the wireless option. We'll then need to select our technology type, and the technology type we're going to be using is the 32-bit and wireless MCUs. With that selected, we can just press the next button in the bottom right corner, and that will then take us into the package installation options. We're going to leave this with the default option, and we're just going to leave that on auto, and again, select next. We'll then have some more licenses that we'll need to accept, so if you want to, feel free to read through them. If not, just hit accept all, and again, let the installation do its thing. This installation now is the longest installation of the whole process, but this is the last one, and once this is done, Simplicity Studio will reboot itself, and we can then get on with installing the firmware. While we're waiting for Simplicity Studio to update, there is another download that we can do, and this download is the download for the firmware for the dongle that we're using. As I'm making use of the Z-Stick 7 dongle, I'll need to download the firmware for that, and you can find a link to this one in the description below. For previous versions of this firmware, you'd need to select the correct frequency version, but with the latest version, which is 1719.2, you can just select the all frequencies, which will give you a global one, and it will then select the correct frequency itself. So go ahead and download the all frequencies version, and store it somewhere you can easily access. If you're making use of another dongle, at this point now you'll need to go and find the latest version of the firmware for the dongle that you're using. You can then carry on with the steps in Simplicity Studio. When the updates are all finished and Simplicity Studio has restarted itself, we'll want to head into the Tools menu. You can find this on the second menu down, and when you select it, it'll open up the Tools dialog window. In the Tools dialog, we want to just scroll down to the bottom, and we want to select Z-Wave PC Controller. When we first open the PC controller, it's going to be blank and we're not going to have anything connected to it. So at this moment in time, we can actually plug in our Z-Wave dongle. If you plug your Z-Wave dongle in now, at the top of the PC controller, you'll see a little cog icon. And if you select that, it's going to take us into the serial ports. And here we can see any devices that we've got plugged into our machine. If you've got your Z-Wave dongle plugged in now, you should be able to see it listed on one of the COM ports, and I can see mine listed here on COM port 8, and it's listed as a Silicon Labs device. 
If you haven't yet plugged yours in, if you just plug it in now and you can press that little refresh button and the device should show up there. As I know that my dongle is making use of COM port 8, I can just select OK and that will take me back into the PC controller software and I can actually now view all the information and start configuring the dongle. As we've already got our dongle firmware downloaded, we can actually just make use of the over the wire firmware update. So in the top right corner there, you want to select OTW firmware update. You'll then just need to locate wherever you save that firmware to and it should be the .global file. Once you select that, the firmware will start updating. So at this point now, in the bottom left, you should be able to see the update process. So just make sure your dongle doesn't get knocked or that it doesn't get unplugged during this whole procedure. Once it completes, you'll see a little green message on the bottom which will tell you that the firmware has been updated. And if you follow it along with the same firmware I've used in this video, then it should be the latest version, which at the time of recording is version 7.19. At this point now our dongle is now fully up to date and you can remove it from your PC and plug it back into your home assistant box and if you open up your Z-Wave controller you should now see that that little error message has gone and you're now running the latest version of the firmware. You're now free to start making use of Z-Wave devices in home assistant without the fear of that firmware bug causing you any problems. If you're after any cool Z-Wave devices then I'd definitely recommend checking out some of AOTEX ones and I covered a couple of them in a video which you can find here and also in the description below. While you're down there checking that out, if you enjoyed this video or you found it useful or it helped you actually update your dongle then don't forget to drop me a like and if you're not already hit that subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell, you'll then be alerted to any future video that I do. As always a massive thank you to these awesome dudes. These awesome dudes are my Patreons and also my YouTube members and if you're interested in helping support my channel then you'll find links to all of those things in the description below. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.